Hello lovelies! I'm Nina. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back. Good to see you. I don't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> I don't know. October was wonderful, wasn't it? If you've been around here, it was fantastic. You should have seen the calendar I had. Oh, chef's kiss. I had all my Instagram posts planned out. I had all my videos planned out. It was a thing of beauty. It was a lot of work though too because I put out what five videos in a row between the last week of September and all of October. I went from zero to 60 and it was a lot and now I find it rather overwhelming because I have a ton of ideas. Now that I've gotten back into filming I have so many ideas that I want to do but I can't focus on which one <laughs> to do. At least like in October, I had the theme. I was doing like cosplay, costumes, Halloween. Now it's just kind of, I don't know. I just hit record <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna fart around and find out. I don't know what we're doing, but we're gonna do something. What would I be better off doing Right now, sewing flannel jammies, because for the third year in a row, I plan on making matching pajamas for myself and my family. There's four of us in total, so it's a lot. Yeah, it's almost December. I should probably start. I'm looking at the fabric right there. It's, it's in my closet. I have the fabric, so... <laughs> what am I doing instead? <laughs> I'm making a dress spontaneously. Um, so I bought this fabric at the same time that I bought the Christmas fabric for our jammies. And spontaneously yesterday, I pulled out my pattern. I've showed this before. It's this blouse pattern. Um, and it's got, I think those are called Reglan sleeves. The, like this. It's these kind of like baseball shirt sleeves. And this is the standard one. Um, my mother-in-law found this pattern. Uh, I do have information though, if you're interested, I'll post it below. Um, in my whole like becoming a hobbit journey, I made this and yeah, I really love it. It's a fantastic, it's like a, um, like a hippie style with like puff sleeves and you can make it whatever length and you can have like elastic or tie neck or whatever. I really like it. So this is the one I used and this pattern I have drafted specifically for me. So I can just pull it out and she's ready to go. So there's the front and back and you, it's like cut in half. So like that, you cut it out on the fold so that, you know, you unfold it and you get the full piece front and back same thing with the sleeves and this was um i think the purple yeah the purple blouse that i made uh within that that was supposed to be the mock-up for the hobbit cosplay this is the length of sleeves and body that I made for that. And then I just tweak it. If I want like a shorter, you know, to make a dress, I'll shorten the, the length. Uh, I can shorten the sleeves, lengthen the sleeves. So and then it all folds up nice and it's ready for next time. So that's what I've done already. That's one of the bodies and the sleeve and I've made mine longer because I'm looking to make long sleeves and I want to make this a dress so I made the the bodice shorter. So yeah I'm gonna go pop over and visit Wendy here give this a sew. I'm doing um French seam or encased seam. So I'm going to sew and then 
fold it and so again that way all the edges are in so it doesn't fray it's a bit of a pain in the butt trying to get your head around remembering that when you're learning to sew you're used to putting right side to right side to sew your seams and this is you got to put it right sides out first and then right sides in i'm gonna go sew these and then we'll continue The part I hate the most is the ironing. So while I do that, let's um let's talk about stuff. Let's have a little chat. Why not? There was a video idea I had. Uh, I don't even remember how long ago now. It was definitely in the before times. And I still kind of wanna talk about it, but I don't necessarily want to like talk at the camera about it. So let's just have a, a casual chat while I work on this project, shall we? Maybe that'll help move things along a little faster too. I guess I'll just jump right in and say, for anybody who didn't know, I was in an abusive relationship. For most of my life over 30 years to be exact because this relationship it was my quote unquote parents and i use the quotes because they weren't my parents i mean biologically yes they contributed to you know my genetic makeup they created me i'm the, they're the reason i'm here I say that they're not my parents, though, because they lost the right to that title. They were extremely manipulative and abusive. It was not a fun time. Um, I thought it was normal for the longest time. And then when I was quite young, I started to realize that, yeah, maybe this isn't normal, but society kept, oh, it's normal. You know, they're your parents. They love you. Parents are like that. You know, it's family stuff. We don't talk about that. You know, all the toxic beliefs of the 90s. Abuse is not okay. Just because, you know, grandma abused mummy doesn't make it okay for mummy to abuse daughter. Just saying. It finally took seeing my own kids get treated like garbage by these people for me to say, no. No, I'm done. That's enough. Because it was one thing for me to be abused and treated that way by the people who claimed to love me. It was another to see my children get treated like that. And I know now that it was never okay. It was never right. I shouldn't have been treated like that any more than my children should have. That relationship is no more. I have since gone no contact. I've had time to, you know, process and think about things. And I've made a few discoveries. And I'm just going to sew these seams. And then we'll pick up this conversation in a little bit. Hold up. So, as I was saying, um, made a few revelations since um, going no contact and finally getting out of that situation. Growing up, I always had a very strong connection to forms of entertainment and media. Music, movies, books. You know, as, as a very bullied child, 
Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables was my best friend. When I didn't know how to express myself, music often did that for me. Lyrics in particular were often very important to me growing up because I didn't always have the words to express what I was going through. And movies and TV shows were a big um, form of escape. Imagining that, you know, I was in those other worlds and having those adventures and being loved. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of movies in particular, I have discovered um, connections, I guess, with movies that either I had felt before but couldn't quite express what it was or that I had, I guess, were like newly discovered, you could say. So, for example, when the movie Rapunzel came out, I was already fairly aware of the truth of my situation. So that movie hit pretty hard. Um, I related pretty hardcore with Rapunzel and her story. The whole manipulative, narcissistic, controlling Mother Gothel, you know, using Rapunzel. Yeah, I felt that. <laughs> um, right from the get-go. That movie has always made me cry because of, you know, Rapunzel's journey. The whole believing that the abuse that she's in is love because she doesn't know any different or doesn't, you know, remember any different. And, you know, that whole people pleasing or Mother Gothel pleasing. Her wishy-washy, you know, I'm a good girl, I'm a bad girl, I'm a good girl, I'm a bad girl, that back and forth. Oh, oh yeah, been there, done that. That movie, <laughs> that movie, however, that, that hurt because unlike Rapunzel, the lucky person who had parents who loved her and, you know, were looking for her and whatever, I didn't have that. I didn't have an escape. I, I, I had a mother Gothel and that was it. So I guess I kind of lived vicariously through Rapunzel. And in a way I have found that where Rapunzel had her birth family that she was able to return to. I have found chosen family who, you know, have sort of accepted and embraced me and and I have the biological family that I have created with my husband so you know there's that too um yeah okay I'm gonna go sew this and then we'll move on one of the movies that I mentioned that there were movies that didn't resonate with me sort of at the time and I came to them later. One of those was Disney's Cinderella. I think part of the reason for that is because of the live action remake. Which as far as I'm concerned was Disney's best live action remake. I think part of why I didn't like the cartoon so much when I was a kid is because she didn't like it. And I thought that if I liked the things that she liked, then maybe she would like me, which of course never happened. 
but that was something that I saw modeled because I have a younger relation who liked everything that our older female relation enjoyed. And she got all the love. She was the golden child. I was the black sheep. Seriously, I've done a deep dive into looking at my past and oh my goodness, the textbook on narcissistic familial abuse was probably, was probably written by the fly on our wall when I was growing up. Textbook. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, let's get back on track. I didn't really like the animated Cinderella when I was growing up. I like it a lot better now. And I think that's because, well, there was more of a focus on family in the live action. I think maybe that's why it resonates with me more. Because you really get the sense that all Cinderella wanted was to be loved. She just, she had a loving family and she remembered it and it was important to her and that's really all she wanted. She didn't really care for the prince. I mean, she did, but who could blame her? Anyway, and yeah, but that's, she didn't set out for that. You know, she just really, all she wanted was a break and I can totally relate. And all she wanted was love. So some of the other points, I've got a little notebook here because I had been making notes on the movies as I sort of watched them. So something else that resonated with me with both versions of Cinderella is that Cinderella endures the abuse that she's put under by her step family um, out of a sense of duty and also this warped idea that a lot of abuse victims believe that if you just love enough, they'll love you back. That's all it is. If you just, if you do the right things, then you'll unlock their love and you'll finally get it, which is so stupid because love should not be earned. It's, it's something that should be freely given, especially between parents and offspring. Okay. I'm going to sew these and be right back. Okay. I'm really liking these sewing breaks in between. <laughs> it's a nice excuse to like, after I'm not necessarily saying much to you, but um, what I'm feeling, what I'm processing as it's coming out, it's heavy. <laughs> This shit still hurts. Okay. So this is done. Ish. Time to try it on. And hopefully find out that it works. Because I knew I was going to be filming. I'm wearing two shirts, so I can try this on while the camera's rolling and not flash anybody. Woohoo! Not that it really matters. They can't demonetize what isn't currently monetized. Uh, all right. Actually, you know what? I think I prefer that I'm not making money to do this. Less stress. I don't think I could handle if I had to constantly pump out content in order to, you know, pay the bills. 
no offense to people who, you know, have to do that or choose to do that. I think that's awesome. You do you. That's, I just, I know myself, I don't think I could. Oh, excellent. I may have made the neck too, <laughs> may have made that too low. Let's see. Well, that works okay. Okay, maybe it, maybe that is good. Oh, maybe that is good. The sleeves, though. Oh, fantastic. I was afraid they were going to be... Excellent. I was afraid they were going to be either too short. So originally, I measured. I thought they were going to be too short, so I put like four inches on and thought, yeep, that's too much. But no, this is, that's perfect. Okay. Awesome. I want to start working on the skirt. And I will tell you about another movie that resonates while I do that. Okay, so. There we go. So I'm pretty sure it was after going no contact, but it might have been just before as we were like sussing out that whole situation. I can't remember exactly which, but right around that time, I saw Coraline for the first time. Had never seen it before, for whatever reason. Happened to be on TV and Wow. Was I not prepared? The stop motion is breathtaking. It's really, really cool. The story, though. Hmm. The story. It was unbelievably darker than I expected. I was not prepared at all for what I saw um, because I get a lot of the decisions that were made were, you know, made because of the medium that was used. So there were things that were changed, but without knowing where the story had come from, without having read the book before, like I saw the movie first, so I didn't know what the story was the first time I saw it. I just knew that it was a lot darker and more terrifying than I expected because basically, you know, the story opens and there's this little girl whose parents want nothing to do with her. At all. So we've got this, you know, neglectful, emotionally distant, real parent. Well, real parents, because they were both like that. And then you've got the other parents. And they aren't any better. I mean, the other mother is basically like some demon creature who wants to feed off the life of Coraline. Okay. So I'm watching this movie going, hmm, this is clearly a movie about like escape, but what is Coraline escaping from? She's going from one form of abuse to another form of abuse. That's your choice. You get to choose abuse or abuse. And that, to me, that made the movie downright terrifying for me. Partly because that was something that had always been threatened. Whenever I said anything about what I had observed, then, no, I'm wrong. And, sure, I could call children's services, but they wouldn't be the ones being punished. I'd be the one taken away. 
And who knows what kind of abusive cesspool I would be thrown into. That would be worse because I'd be hit. You know, because physical beatings have always been and still are considered worse than verbal beatings. Even though from the time I was far too young to recognize that this was a problem, I would often tell people that she was worse because of her biting tongue, because she could say things that would leave wounds that would fester. Because sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can destroy the soul. But of course, no one took that seriously. And I'm going to go and sew the skirt seams now. Be right back. I am now wearing the dress, which means it's done. But before I show you, I'm just going to run through what happened when I stopped filming because <laughs> it all fell apart. <laughs> okay, so basically when... Um, I stopped in the last clip. I I think I had put the pockets in already, but basically I did it wrong. So I had like, there's the skirt from the outside and then the pocket looked like that. So it was, you know, wrong side. Because I could not for the life of me get my head around how to put an inseam pocket while using encased seams or French seams. I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. It was okay, it was functional, so I was just gonna leave it. And then I tried it on and the skirt was far too long. It felt like a nightgown. So I decided to remove the skirt. And, which was fun because I had to unpick two seams instead of just the one. So I removed the skirt and then basically, okay, so I'll show you again. Again, so here's like the skirt and it was attached to the bodice and then there was like a pocket down here. I felt like the pocket was too low as well. So I took the skirt off the bodice and then where the pocket was, I just basically cut that off. So the skirt was now shorter. And then I was going to salvage those pockets, still couldn't get my head around how to inseam, encase seam pockets. Couldn't figure it out. So I just closed up the skirt, reattached it to the bodice, and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Oh, I can't remember if I mentioned as well, I put cuffs on the sleeves keeps the sleeves from getting messy. I can, you know, pull them up and do stuff and they don't get in the way. Anyway, and yeah, so it was just going to be as it is right now without the pockets. And then I decided, nope, I definitely want pockets. So I put pockets on. They're not the pockets I wanted, but they're the pockets I need. <laughs> I don't... Mm, yeah, it's been, it's been. And as keen as I was to get this going. I mean, I started this, what, like two weeks ago or something, and I finished it like a week ago. And I'm only just now doing this because I had to do Christmas jammies. Oh, hold on. This is the fabric for the Christmas jammies. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? I love it. The last two years I focused on getting like gender neutral colors um and this year i decided no i don't care if the boys don't want to wear purple well then fluff them because i like purple clearly clearly <laughs> and yeah so i got the the fabric with the purple so i started doing that and got distracted and i am now filming the reveal like two weeks after this project started. <laughs> and like two days before I want to post this video. So I started early, I had my... <laughs> uh...
I had no chill when I was supposed to, and now that I need to work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, that, I think, in a nutshell, is my disjointed story of making this dress. And a little glimpse into my youth. I wasn't going to post this video uh, when I started editing it. And then I decided, fluff that. You know what? Most of my life, other people have been telling my story incorrectly, and it's my turn. It's my story. I should be the one to tell it. So if you have stuck around to this point and watched this video, then thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, lovelies. What do you say we take a look at this finished dress, shall we? I love it, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> so. Here's the elasticated neckline. I used some stretch cotton that was left over from daughter's Halloween costume instead of an elastic. So it's got a nice little bow detail and it stretches. Very cute. As I mentioned, the cuffs, freaking love these. It gives the sleeves a bit of a, a poof, which is super cute. There's like the empire waist, which actually hits me at my natural waist, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> I've only made like four of these dresses now, and this is the first one that hits me where I intended it to. And then pockets. Oh yeah, baby. Patch pockets. But I figured it's a busy enough pattern that, uh, it's not terribly obvious that there's pockets. Not that it would matter, because pockets are awesome. Oh, and inside the pocket. I have a purple star, like a, a wizard cape, kind of, or a magician's cape kind of fabric. Because I found that this flannel was really um, static clingy. And I didn't want the pockets to static cling, so I put a little bit of a satin in the pocket, which I think is cool. And ta-da! There she is, about knee length. Ah! It's super warm and cozy and cute and does not look like a nightgown. I'm getting like 90s baby doll vibes and I am here for it. My inner teenager is here for it. Mm. Okay, one more spin. So cute. I've made a lot of dresses in the last couple of years and I think this one is... I don't want to say it's my favorite, but it's up there. It's, it's in the top. Oh yeah, it's all soft and cozy. I'm gonna wear it so much this winter. You're probably gonna get sick of seeing it, especially if you follow me on Instagram. But yeah, so there we go. And that whole process was cathartic. Thanks so much if you've made it to this point, lovelies. I appreciate it. And that's it for me. I'm not gonna drag out this outro too much longer because I think I already have. <laughs> It's like saying goodbye to my best friend. We say goodbye on the couch, and then we make it to the front door, and three hours later, we're on the porch, and then two hours later, we're in the driveway. <laughs> That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed, or found it interesting, or feel a little less alone. Sadly, family abuse and generational trauma is all too common. Found that when I started speaking out. So I hope you're not in the same boat, but if you are, you're not alone. I'm right there with you. I will see you in my next video. It's going to be a little bit more upbeat to end of the year. I hope you're having a good December. Stay warm. Give into the hibernation. Your body needs it. Listen, give yourself rest. Cut yourself slack. You're awesome. Much love. Take care.
Stay fabulous. Bye. Mwah.